Good evening. I am delighted tonight because it's a show about gratitude. I would like to thank my humanitarian guests for making a difference. Tonight we are going to talk about women and breast cancer. Please understand that we know that men also get breast cancer, but tonight I'm going to concentrate on women. With me tonight is Anne Line from the Carol M. Baldwin Breast Cancer Research Fund, and she's going to tell us the latest, what's going on, and share with us why she got involved. Hi, Anne. Hello, Anne Gail. Line, the Carol Baldwin Foundation. How are you tonight? Wonderful. Thank you Great. for having me. Now, you have been with the Carol M. Baldwin Fund for what, 14 years? 14 years now. What brought you into that? I worked um, for the Suffolk County Women's Services okay. in their um, Breast Health Partnership, and I met Carol through um, that, and it just seemed like a perfect fit to move on. She was starting up her fund, and it was I was asked to join, and I did, and now 14 years later, I'm still there. Uh, well, I'll tell you, this is a show about gratitude, and I, I know that I am so grateful, not just for being here, having... Uh, fought breast cancer, you know, 39 yes. years ago, but because of all that I have learned and all that I'm still learning and able to impart to other people, how gratifying is it for you to be in this field? It is. I can't tell you the people I have met, the women I meet, you know, I've gained so much knowledge myself, which helped because my mother actually was diagnosed with breast cancer five yeah. years ago. Uh -huh. So we, I had options, and I think... When you work in the field, you have so many people that want to help you. Exactly. And, and you can take, you know, their advice, and they right. can guide you. And when you're going through something like that, I think that's what hit me the hardest, is that it's their own little community, and they're there to help. And it's, you know, they just can't do enough for you. Well, and I think you hit on something here, too. And we've been stressing this. Knowledge is the key. Yes. But I have to tell you something, Anne. I read recently something that did disturb me, and what I'm trying to do is get facts out there. What I had read the other day is that many women, when they discover their own lumps, and we know that you can find it yes. yourself, you could go a uh, clinical exam, and of course there are other tests as well, right. imaging. But what I heard the other day disturbed me in that many women are still waiting five to eight months after they discover a lump before they go to a doctor yes. to get it examined and find out what it is. What disturbs me is that, first of all, 80% of all those lumps are usually benign. So all the anxiety that a person is feeling. But you waited all that you time. Waited. And if it should be cancerous, what you want to do is take care of it immediately <laughs> because of early detection, right? That's right. And it just goes without saying, if there's something there that shouldn't be there, you have to you have to immediately. Exactly. You have to do You that. have to be your own advocate. advocate. You have Absolutely. that's something that, you know, it's not normal, it's not supposed to be there. Get it out. Get you it get checked. it out, get, get it, it out. checked. You don't take no for an answer. It's something you have to do. Well, so many people just I'll wait, you know, it'll be no, picked no, up and no. you and the fear of the yes. unknown is probably even worse. I know too that uh, I'm getting so many phone calls and so many emails from the show asking about what does one do when one is diagnosed. And for me, I'd have to say the best piece of advice in addition to the education and being my own advocate and working with my team would have to be staying positive. What's an example where you could come up with where somebody can stay positive during this examination, finding it out, and then treatment? Well, because we have so many options available, it, it's not a death sentence anymore. There's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, I know that the treatment's sometimes very hard, and, you know, I really do wish there was something less barbaric, you know, mm -hmm. but right we now... we may be getting to, right? Let's hope. You know, that's why we do the research. But right now, your attitude, I think, is 100% going to get you through it. In the pageant, where I won the title of Miss Senior America, and I'd like to show this video, in this particular video, it's my uh, philosophy of life. I had to go rather quickly because I was timed no more than 36 seconds or I would be penalized, but I used the title and sesh to get out there to show the women that you can overcome this and take this and share with others so that they can learn. 
So let's take a look, please, at this winning philosophy and my winning moment. That's my philosophy about never giving up a balance emotionally, spiritually, and physically, and pretty much live my life that particular way. The other thing I found that was so helpful, and you could tell me if you've seen this as well, I believe in positivity and surrounding oneself with humor and laughter. In, you know, Norman Cousins had written a book about how he believed that all the negativity contributed to his getting ill. So Norman Cousins said, if that's the case, then maybe being positive and laughter will heal me. He was given less than a year to live, and he ended up with 20 years. So I think that's another piece. Have you seen that, too, in the people that I you've have. With, I have. I have. I've, I've seen it, your, your attitude. It's something you have. Why get depressed about it? You're going to go through it. Just have the great attitude. I think when you surround yourself with that, Get rid of the negative people. Right. Get, get rid of the rid negative, of the negative energy. People. You got it. I think when you surround yourself yeah. with the good, it, it pays off. It pays off. I mean, and it really does. And what will this disease permit me to do? Asked Bernie Siegel in Love, Medicine, and Miracles. Excellent books. Excellent sources. You know, when I was diagnosed, we didn't have all the info that yes, we have right. today. So I had to go to the books. But that also was fabulous because it allowed me to step outside the box, examine, and end up trying new things. I faced cancer, guys. I'm not going to be afraid of anything else. I'm going to try something. And then what it works for me, I'm going to share with my fellow sisters. And I think so that's I can... important, yes. Absolutely. I think people have to know that you can reach out. There are people who there are, are out there willing there. to help. To share their this. experience with you. Right. Answer your right. questions and not, and not feel silly asking them. Let's go to Carol Baldwin, 1990, double mastectomy. And then what happened from there? What did she do? She opened up. She did. Find, well, she kept it inside because I, her son was getting married. Right. She didn't Stephen want to ruin the wedding or anything. Right. So, and then she did. She went through it, had the double mastectomy, did her chemo, her and radiation. And then over at Stony Brook, she... And now she's got, you know, she's a really huge advocate. She feels that research is going to find the cure for breast cancer. That's her and mission. And that's exactly right. She has a um, breast care center in her name over at Stony Brook where mm -hmm. they do the mammographies and right. all the testing. So, and her fund raises, I mean, we give a quarter million dollars every year to Stony Brook in research grants, Amazing. which I think is what I'm most proud of because we're a small grassroots organization. Right. I'm basically right. the only employee there. I count mm -hmm. a lot of my volunteers and my board. And for us to be able to do that, I just, I'm really proud of that. I think that's an incredible amount of okay. money, and, right. I, and it goes has, to great. She the Breast Care Center, yes. and what's unique about that is that all the doctors yes. work together in tandem. So you have your diagnosis, you have your radiologist, you don't have to wait for that report Everybody's to come in, in the same. to take days. Yes. Everybody's together. Well, we have a phone call. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Carol. And Anne Line, we are making a difference. How nice to hear from you. We were just talking about what you've been doing with your uh, places, and now we're going to talk a little bit about you upstate with your CNY Breast Cancer Fund. So we'd like to ask you. If, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Go right ahead. Thank you, Carol. Everyone knows. Uh, how involved you and your family have been. But I'd like to share a little bit with your two daughters. What's Jane up to? 
Uh, Jane is on the board, and she runs the golf tournament, which we had 544 people play. All right. And don't you have something coming up with a run on October 13th? Yes, that's the run for the cure. That's with Upstate, Syracuse University, and my son. And what about Beth, who is an angel by my side? What a beautiful article about your daughter, Beth. And I know everyone's involved, but would you share a little bit about Beth and what she's trying to accomplish? Uh, she, the more grand the quicker we are going to find a cure. And uh, we gave five grants down there because of Anne and how hard she works with her people. Oh, Anne has been alone. with me since I started. Oh. And uh, Beth, we gave five up here. And so that's 10 research grants, $50,000 research grants we gave this year. Now, Beth feels that a cure is imminent and really on the horizon. Carol, how do you feel about that? I really feel uh, we have gone to four funerals in the last month because of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I really feel we have to find something Absolutely. to stop this. We have to. And early detection is the biggest, biggest thing. The self-breast examination every month at the same time. And if you find anything at all, a lump, anything, you see a doctor and have a physical. Immediately. Thank you. Uh, one more thing. I know that you have received so many honors, but I think you're particularly proud, and maybe you could share why, the Ellis Island honor. Uh, well, I don't Never. really know uh, why I was chosen, but Aww. that general, who is the head of... Uh, everything, came over and gave me a kiss and Aww. leaned down and said, thank you for all your family does for Aww. breast cancer. And I was so honored that he chose me out of all those people uh, to come over and say that to me because that was really special. Well, you and are really. And that dress, boy, did I stand out. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. You are really special. You've made a difference in so many lives and people's lives that you don't even know about. Do you know I still wear that ring that I received from one of the galas where you had all of the survivors come up, and I call it my good luck ring, and I think of you so often when I do wear it. We want to thank you for making a difference in everyone's lives. God oh, bless you. Thank you. And we do, if somebody is going through chemotherapy, Alec sponsors our blankets, and we send okay. them blankets, and they're beautiful. I mean, they're so cozy and warm, and you know you're cold when you have chemotherapy. Yeah. And we send out... I couldn't tell you how many of those blankets we have sent out. Thank you, Carol. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Anne, you want to say goodbye? Goodbye, Carol. We'll talk with you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Oh, she's so sweet. You have a couple of events coming up that I want to also mention. We do. We have um, a soccer tournament. We mm -hmm. team up with the Cow Harbor United Soccer, and all the soccer teams that play in that tournament purchase pink socks. Right. And they play the weekend in the pink socks, and we receive the proceeds. Oh, I love uh, incredible. That. The chill. It's Fields of Pink, Save Our Soccer Moms. Cow and Harbor. What's Cow that? Harbor. Yes, okay. they are, and it's everybody. All soccer teams from all across the too. island. Wedding gowns. What is that all Wedding about? gowns. We have a donate your wedding gown. We um, are going to try to get like 50 wedding gowns together. We're almost there. We've just started. But 
we'd like to open them up and either rent the gowns out and oh. offer the gowns to survivors right. to use for their for wedding the without any what charge or cost. Oh, that's gorgeous. And most people don't know what to do with their wedding dresses. You're right. So You're this right. would it's a wonderful cause. And you oh. can always look on the website. There's information for it, but that's wonderful. And then we have a couple spots in the New York City Marathon. All right, so, so. we've discussed early detection, yes. going to a doctor, keeping positive some of the techniques. Our next guest, Dr. Ian Borhill, is going to talk about you've been diagnosed, uh, you have to have treatment, after the treatment, mastectomy, where do we go from here? And, and I want to say that, you know, mastectomy, some people do not want reconstructive surgery. And whatever you're comfortable with is the best advice that one can yes. give. But we want to share with you today options. 